Song Yudong gets the uh, underdog win against Casey Kenny, man. The Kung Fu Monkey came to play, and I'll tell you what, AJ, he was almost my fighter of the night because I feel like he was the unsung hero of this card. You feel me? I think before we talk about how impressive uh, Song Yudong was, can we talk Casey Kenny and what being a martial artist is and winning in style, losing in style, winning with humility, losing with humility. Um, it's easy to, to be humble and win. It's easy to be nice guy when you win. It's hard to be the nice guy when you lose. And Casey Kenny pulled a uh, Marvin Vittori where he's over here screaming that he won the fight. He's jumping on the cage saying, yeah, what's up? No, I won. It's clear 29, 20, uh, like 29, 27, I believe for Song Yudong, man. Very, very clear, very evident. What happened, man? Do you think that he just got too overhyped because he was able to kind of contend with Dominic Cruz and maybe discounted Song Yudong? What do you think? I think it has to be something like that, man, because in his mind, he was winning that fight. And don't get me wrong, it was very close. But Song really started to, you know, kind of pull away towards the end, which I found kind of crazy. You know, he started to really get, you know, that third, second, third round, he started to pull away, kind of blew me away. And I was surprised Kenny didn't go for more takedowns. You know, we saw it early in the beginning, early in the first. He kind of was like hinting at that ankle pick the whole time. And then again, late in the third round, he started looking for a little bit more takedowns. But I don't know what – I think it might have just been the, the the clout that Kenny had or the, the the steam, you know, of the USA chants that were in the building that he thought, oh, man, you know, they're chanting USA. I must be winning. But it was actually the opposite case. They're chanting USA because you're losing. You need to get back up on that horse. So – uh, I, yeah, it was it was crazy to see that Kenny actually, you know, was after the after they announced the victory, jumped on the cage. I get the whole thing, you know, the fight gets done, you jump on the cage right then and there. That you know, it makes sense because you do think you won at that point. But once it's confirmed that it's an actual L for you, it was weird to see him jump up like that and kind of like he's gonna get the uh, the judges to change their mind and be like, oh no no no, my bad. It, it was actually that guy. I'm sorry. Yeah, it was, it was weird to see. And I don't know why Casey Kenny would actually continue to go through with it unless it's, you know, in his mind, you know, he he's should have won. But it was it was it was a close fight either. Regardless, it was it was definitely a close fight. But if we're talking about global scorecard, it wasn't really close on the global uh, global scorecard. It was a split decision, however. But uh, at the end of the day, man, listen, I just think that uh, in terms of being a martial artist, you lose a couple points there, man. You know, it's like if you have a, a, a I think part of being a black belt, right? Because he's he's a clear black belt in judo, man. Like he's a legit black belt. But part of having a black belt, I think, is the respect that you bring to the sport that you you know are a practitioner of and that you represent. And when you do things like that, I think that that should take you take a stripe away. You know what I mean? Like, do something like that. Of course, you're not. no one's going to ever do that. You know what I mean? There's been way more sore losers in the UFC and in MMA than Casey Kenny. I just thought that he's much better of an of a fighter and an athlete than that poor sportsmanship that he uh, performed against Song Yudong. Now, in terms of the impressiveness of the Kung Fu Monkey, man, this is a dude who came in. He's a China versus USA rivalry, comes into the USA, beats an American fighter, does it definitively. And in the press conference, he says... Yeah, Casey Kenny, he looks slow, man. You know what I mean? That dude looks slow. And uh, I think the other the other uh, theme of the night, aside from calf kicks, was speed kills. Because Song Yitong was killing this man with speed. We thought he would slow down come round three. I thought that he was tired after round one, man. But he gritted it out. He gutted it out, man. How impressive is Song Yitong's boxing, man? Like, in terms of the bantamweight division, do you think that he's got, like, top-notch uh, boxing in the entire division? I'd probably say top ten. Top 10, because there's some serious boxers in, what is it, the 135-pound class? Yep. Yeah, man, there's there's some real deal killers going forward in the uh, in the, in the class. So, but it, crisp, very crisp, man, and a lot a lot better than I, we always talk, when I watch Song Yedong, I always think he's just going to plod forward, always walk you down and not really have any, uh, you know, any, any lateral movement, any backwards movement, any kind of dips, nothing like that. And he looked good, man. He was, he was literally rolling perfectly. Everything was in there. His footwork was impressive. His hands were sharp. It was a really impressive win for Song Yedong. And not like, what, what I saw or what impressed me most about him, his speed was so fast and so crisp. But he was able to maintain the distance. You know, he wasn't able to let Casey Kenny get up in on close to him. And he was actually able to, you know, be be in that that zone where you're dangerous, but not enough to get touched up, which I really liked about Song Gidong, man. It was very impressive win. I'd say his hands, man, top 10. We got to see him fight somebody, uh, you know, a good boxer coming up next. So 
Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. And we'll definitely talk, uh, we'll talk matchmaking a little bit later, man. But I agree with you. Distant management was definitely the key to this fight. And there's the difference that I kind of picked up on because both of these dudes want to walk forward, right? And in one of those clashes of styles, you're going to realize, okay, one of these two are going to have a power advantage, one's going to have a speed advantage. Since Yadong had the speed advantage, I think that he thought to himself, okay, every time Kenny sits down on his shots, because that's how he has to go. And right? when he goes, he sits down. You know, it takes a little bit longer. What he sacrifices in speed, he makes up for in the power, right? Every time he sits down, I'm just going to move out the way just a little bit, right? So every one of those shots are just missing, or they're glancing off the arm or, you know, glancing off the shoulder, whatever. But I'm just out the way. I'm going to hit him, and I'm not going to let him hit me. So you're going to get tired swinging and missing a bunch. You're going to get real tired. You know what I mean? It was, it was a... Uh, uh, talk about a master class, man. I thought that it was a really, really, really good performance by Song Yidong. And he got a, we got to put more respect on these Chinese fighters' names, man. You know, after that one, it was like UFC 262 where China went 0-3 on the night or something crazy like that. I think that we kind of discounted a lot of the Chinese fighters, man. But uh, Song Yidong, he's game, man. He's got a win over Cheeto Vera, Cheeto Vera and Casey Kenny now. So I think that he has a clear spot in the back end of that top 15. He's not quite there yet, but uh, one more big win, he could definitely get himself in those rankings, man. So... Um, with that being said, AJ, do you got anything else on this bout or you want to move on? No, let's move on, man. It was a good fight, but uh, yeah, let's move on.